In FEA, structures can stretch and compress. We can restrain the left end with an external force value of F1, and on the right end, observe the displacement, commonly expressed with the letter U. You can think of the bar as a spring and surmise that the force on the right end must identically be the displacement times a spring constant, commonly expressed with the letter K. We write that the internal force F2 is identically equal to K times U. The spring constant K is also called the stiffness of the structure and it comes from the material modulus denoted as E, also known as Young's modulus. The original length of the section, L, and the original undeformed cross-sectional area of the section, A. For the case of this bar, the spring constant is the area times material modulus divided by the original length. So, what are the unknowns? The unknown quantities are the displacement, strain, and stress. We can solve for the displacement, U, because we have the equilibrium equation. F1 is known, and K is known so we can solve directly from the equilibrium equation. Now we need to solve for the strain and the stress. The strain is just the change in length per unit original length. The term delta L in the equation is just the displacement U solved for earlier. Notice that strain has no units, but some people call it inches per inch, strain or micro strain if the change in length is measured in micro inches. So the strain is next calculated by inserting U into the strain equation. Next, the stress is calculated. Recall the stress is defined as the force per unit area and has units of PSI or pascals. However, in FEA, the stress is calculated using the constitutive relation for the material. Here we see a linear relationship between the stress and the strain. If the material is stressed twice as far, the strain will be twice as much. The constant of proportionality is the material modulus or Young's modulus, big E. The equation shows the relationship. The stress is equal to the material modulus times the strain. So we see the stress can be calculated by multiplying the material modulus times the strain calculated earlier. We need to look at constitutive relations for the materials. Some materials, such as plastics, can exhibit behavior in a nonlinear fashion, as shown by the red curve. That is, the material can get stiffer or softer as it is stretched or compressed. Most metals exhibit behavior along the green line, but only up to a point such as just before yielding or breaking. Note that SOLIDWORKS Premium Simulation is limited to linear elastic material behavior as shown by the green line. Another consideration is whether the material behaves elastically. Most materials behave elastically if you do not apply too much load. The material strain will go back to zero and stay along the straight line when you unload the structure. If you apply too much load, the material can either break or exhibit a plastic effect, also known as yielding and shown by the red trace on the graph. In most metals, this can cause a phenomenon known as permanent set. This means when you unload the structure to zero load, shown by the continuing red line pointing towards zero stress, the strain will not be zero. You can directly observe this effect when you bend a metal paper clip too far. It stays in a bent position when you remove the load. Note that SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium will not model this plasticity effect. However, since many people consider failure at the yield point, you probably won't need to do this. The stress at yield is published for most common materials.